can introduce yourself. Uh, I am Sitske Benting. Yeah. I am from the Protestant Church in the Netherlands. And I have the privilege to visit the Presbyterian Church on behalf of the Protestant Church in the Netherlands. Because our churches are connected for already 60 years or even more. And we used to have this connection by people from our church living in Rwanda. Now we only do it by visiting each other. Yeah. So I'm privileged that I can visit Rwanda now, today. Today. So is it your first time in Rwanda or it's not? No, it's not the first time. Yeah. Uh, I have been in Rwanda in 2007, in 2008. After that I had two children and then I could visit Rwanda again in 2015. So this year, 2017, it's my fourth time already. So it seems like you came in Rwanda, you often come in Rwanda, so you came several times. Yes, so, I did. Yeah. So what, 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 how did you start the, the partnership with Presbyterian Church in Rwanda? Um, today, me or the missionaries a long time ago. The missionaries, missionaries. You know about? Oh, I was not born then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think the missionaries came here and they helped the church in their theology. They helped to write the liturgy of this church. They helped to construct many buildings in the Presbyterian church. The, there was a missionary, he was a pastor. There was another missionary, he was a constructor. There was a missionary and she was a nurse. Um, I follow their footsteps. I see how what they have started. The EPR still uh, continues nowadays. And I admire that very much from the EPR. Yeah. So as you said, missionary came in a group of three, pastor, nurse, constructor. Yes. So it means when you talk about church in Rwanda, it seems that people understand evangelism only. Yes. What do you think about evangelism that is supported by other real activities or actions? Other, uh, what, what kind of activities? Evangelism that is with actions, different ah. concrete actions. Um, I think that uh, one of the ideas of the missionaries in the Netherlands is you cannot be in a missionary church if you don't have a good basis. Yeah. If you don't know your theology well, you can say whatever you want about the Bible. You need to know something about the Bible to be able to explain the Bible good and to also tell the liberating message of the Bible to attract new people to come to the church. So one of the activities I think you need a, a, to know what you are saying, what you are want to do as church before you can go out and be a missionary church. Okay, that's great. So you came in Rwanda a week ago. Yes. So how was your week and what did you saw in Rwanda? Ah, thank you. I had a very good week. Yeah. Um, I have been able to visit many places. I've been to the south in Butare. Yeah. I've been to the west in Rubengera. I've been to the north in Gisenyi. And a good thing was that I could compare it with my trip of 2008. Then I visited also Rubengera and I visited Gisenyi. But at Kizenyi, there was a very small technical school. Yeah. And I sat together with some of the EPR staff and the director of the technical school. Yeah. And we looked at the dream that maybe they could build a sleeping hall for the boys. Yeah. Now I was there again, nine years later. There was not only the drawing of the new uh, dormitory of the boys, I was received uh, in, a, in a ceremony 
in the dormitory for the boys. Oh. So there were 300 students in the dormitory, 300. dancing, singing, being very happy. They invited me because they have constructed also not only a dormitory for the boys, but also for the girls. So that from next year on, there will be just as many boys as girls having the opportunity to study in the technical school. And that made me happy and proud and that made the children and the students also very happy. Yeah. That you can see this change in only some a couple of years. Yeah. And what other places that you have visited? Um, I have visited in Butare, the uh, theological faculty of the uh, now called Protestant University. So when I was there in 2008, there was only a theological faculty. Only a few buildings. Only very old buildings. Yeah. Uh, they already constructed a new conference hall. But there were only uh, 40 or maybe 50 theological students. I come there again nine years later. It's a university. <laughs> with faculties, thousand students, so many changes. It's wonderful to see that how we as churches are connected. We know each other's uh, daily challenges, but we can also see each other's uh, joy and proud. Okay, let's come back to the technical school. When you yes. see that change and you know that you have contributed for that, so how do you feel when you see that achievement? Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, it makes me very proud because um, I didn't construct a stone to the building. No. It is uh, the students, it is the parents, the teachers themselves, the constructor of the EPR who constructed the building. All I did was being intermediary and going to large foundations in the Netherlands representing the EPR, representing my church, asking to support a school in Rwanda. So it made me very proud of the students that were there, that they all together make this very big achievement. Yeah. So how in Netherlands do they feel when you, see, when you are explaining about Rwanda and trying to mm -hmm. correct support to bring the house in Rwanda? How do they feel for on their side? Thank you for the question. Um, they see also how they can get contribute despite the distance to children, to students in Rwanda. So they feel very much engaged. If not, they wouldn't ask me how um, my visit to you has been. So they feel this engagement, but they also accept that not everybody can come and visit Rwanda. So they, they accept me in that I represent them in that. So I have promised them I will make pictures of the building. I will tell the stories from the students. And he said, okay, great come back and tell us yeah, thank you very much so what are other activities that you are working together in EPR um, I think that the EPR uh, has is going through this process of decentralization yeah. it is a very important process I think when it started in 2007 or 2008 you had a dream, you had a vision. Things ha need to change in the structures of the ch this church. People of the parishes should feel proud of themselves. Yeah. And I think when I look at it now, 10 years later, you have achieved in that. And I'm a bit jealous of your churches. <laughs> because when I go to the church, I went to the church in Izano, yeah. and I went to the church in Rukoma, uh, yes. There were so many young people. There were children. I would go to the Sunday school. There were maybe 100, 150 children. In my church, there would be five. Only or ten. Five. <laughs> yeah. 
and people were happy people were dancing yeah. and the most important thing i i have learned and i i will cherish in my heart is that during the church service people start by welcoming everybody it's not only the pastor who says okay welcome let's continue the liturgy it's pastor who invites oh first let the children stand up let's say hello to everybody yeah. then the women can stand up and also all the visitors are invited to tell them who they are and where they come from yeah. so even if the group of people maybe 800 people it's amazing for me yeah, I am used to them maximum them. 100 people yeah. but they know each other they know oh there's a new person I must greet him after the church service yeah. it made me f it, it gave me such a warm feeling of that's the way we as Christians are connected you look in each other's face and you say hello yeah. yes it was wonderful okay that's good yeah, that. so but they are also they are confused because they normally with the missionary the evangelism came from west <laughs> yes and today yes. they are, when they see or they hear that he, most of the young people are not attending church service they, yes they feel they are afraid that even in this country it could happen Is that so, so what what should be the reason why many young people are not attending church service they like to go on sport club yes yeah, sport club music things yes. like that yeah it's true young people don't attend the church anymore in my church um i i'm not sure um sometimes i think that the old generation in my church didn't allow change they wanted to keep everything as they were used to do it the liturgy couldn't change the songs they were singing in the church didn't change but you know they grow older and they like other things young people they want to move they want to hear music old people want to just stay calm Still. sing quiet so i think there is a generation in my church that was no not so open for young people yeah. and now they are complaining that the young people all left so maybe it's that but i'm not sure <laughs> okay so after one week of visiting Presbyterian Church in Rwanda, yes. what are your appreciation and what is the recommendation? That the re you can, <laughs> okay. What you, can you recommend church leaders or even church members? Ah, thank you. Well, what I like very much is that my visit showed how much we are connected. It is sometimes very difficult if you live so far away from each other mm. to only connect via email you cannot maintain a relationship by emailing only you have to visit each other mm. so what I really will cherish from my visit here is the warmth and the feeling of welcomeness hospitality and love friendship that I received here and that I hope I can give back to the Presbyterian Church and take with me to my Protestant Church and recommendations um, continue to um, motivate young people to have an active role in the church I think that is could be very stimulating also as an example for other churches so continue with that and try to find new ways so that we can hear about it so that you can inspire us with your good ideas okay thank yes. you very much thank you <laughs>